Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we will continue studying switch capacitor converters. This is the seventh video in this series. And today we will study the fractional gain switch capacitor converter. So in this video we will see an introduction. Then we will show the topology of the fractional gain switch capacitor converters. We will study its step up operation and its step down operation. We will see some alternative implementation. And along this video, we will be showing some LTSPI simulations to illustrate the operation of the converter. This is the topology corresponding to the fractional gain switch capacitor converter. As usual, we have several switches that operate during the 5-1 interval and other switches like those here operating during the 5-2 interval. So with this converter during interval 5-1, we are supplying the load through all the capacitors in parallel as shown in this figure here. And during interval 5-2, we are connecting all the capacitors in series and supplying the load as shown in this figure. So let's analyze this converter in order to obtain its basic characteristics. The analysis is done exactly as we have seen in previous videos. So in this case, before interval 5-1, we are in a situation like this, in which we have all the capacitors in parallel and with a voltage equal to the output voltage divided by the number of capacitors. So and the total charge that we have would be calculated as shown here, and it's equal to, say, to the capacitance C times the output voltage. Then, after interval 5-1, the situation is like this, in which all capacitors are with a voltage equal to the input voltage minus the output voltage, and the charge will be given by this expression here. So, in this case, we have that the capacitors are charged up during the interval 5-1. So, the difference in the charge will be given by this expression here, Q1 prime minus Q1. And then, during the other interval, we have that before 5-2, we have all the capacitors in series and charged up to a voltage Vi minus Vo which is the voltage that we have uh, after uh, interval 5-1. So at a given instant, we are going to close this equivalent switch here. And then after interval 5-2, we will be in a situation like this, in which all the capacitors are in series and in parallel with the output. So all of them have a voltage equal to Vo divided by N. So we can calculate again the charge that we have before phi 2 and after phi 2. In this situation, of course, we have a discharge of the capacitor into the load. So this charge here is lower in this case. And therefore, the difference in the charge delta Q2 is given by Q2 minus Q2 prime. So this is the summary of the operation that we have just seen. So the total charge that is transferred into the load is the charge delta Q1 plus delta Q2 that we can obtain using these expressions here. So operating on this expression and taking into account that, as we know, the average output current is the frequency times the total charge. Then we can obtain this final expression here for the output voltage as a function of the average output current. So we can see how the ideal gain is n divided by n plus 1, so it's a fractional gain. And also the equivalent resistance, Re, is given by this expression here, which is n over n plus 1 squared times 1 over Fc. So we can see that the equivalent resistance is much lower than 1 over Fc. If n is very much greater than 1, then the equivalent resistance tends to 1 over n 
times 1 over fc. So again, because this is a, a converter with a gain lower than 1, we have an um, equivalent resistance, which is lower than the factor 1 over fc. Regarding the output voltage ripple, as we have seen also in previous video, in this case we have uh, two injections of charge into the output capacitor, one during phi 1 interval and another one during phi 2 interval. So the output voltage ripple is going to be like this, we are going to have two different peaks at the output voltage, one during interval phi 1 and another one during interval phi 2. We can calculate these two peak-to-peak -peak voltages, delta VO1 and delta VO2, by using the charges that we, have, we are injecting into the output capacitor. We have seen this in previous video also for another converter. So in this case we can calculate delta Q1 as we have seen before and then using the expression that relates the output voltage and the average output current we can finally obtain this value of the charge during interval phi 1 as a function of the average output current and then finally we obtain this value for the peak-to-peak -peak voltage ripple during this interval. Same thing during interval phi 2, we obtain this value of the charge and then this other value of the peak-to-peak -peak output voltage ripple. So with this we have everything, we could analyze the harmonics of the uh, output voltage ripple if we like and do the design of the output capacitor for a given value of the output voltage ripple. So as usual we summarize here the average model of this converter. We have the ideal output voltage source here, the series resistance, the equivalent resistance, and then the load, the characteristic, and the output voltage as a function of the input voltage and the load. And then we have the, uh, the, the ripple, the output voltage ripple, with two different peak-to-peak -peak voltages, the efficiency, and finally the dynamics. Let's do a quick design and simulation to check our study. This will be the 3 4 converter, in which we are using a number of capacitors equal to 3. Uh, with an input voltage of 10 volts, the output voltage should be 3 over 4 times the input voltage, so this is something like 7.5 volts ideally. We will be using, as, as always, a capacitor, the value of the capacitance C equal to 10 microfarads, the output capacitance 90 microfarads, and the switching frequency 100 kHz. The load is going to be something like 7.5 ohms, so in order to have around 1 ampere at the output. So the ideal output voltage, as we have seen, is 7.5 volts. If we calculate the value of the equivalent resistance, is 0.188 ohms. So the output voltage that we get is 7.32 volts, quite quite close to the ideal value, 7.5, and the efficiency is very good, 0.98. The output current is also 0.98 amperes, and the two uh, ripples that we have, one is 82 millivolts and the other one 27 millivolts. And the time constant of the circuit is approximately 16 0.9 microseconds. So let's do a simulation now to check that everything is correct. Here we can see our converter uh, with the different components. Remember that all these components, the switches and the parts generators, are from our control library that was developed in previous videos and it is available from my website. So here, as usual, we are operating at 100 kHz. 
uh, we are going to do a simulation up to one millisecond and saving data for, uh, for the last 50 microseconds. So we can now run the simulation and then we can see here now the output voltage, the average value is as expected, 7.32 volts and we can see also the two peaks at the uh, output voltage ripple as expected with uh, values that are approximately the values that we have calculated theoretically here for example this one is around 62 millivolts and the other one is also similar to the value that we have calculated is around 20 millivolts we can also take a look at the uh, current being injected into the output capacitor. We can add another pane to see it better. So we can see how we are injecting a charge into the output capacitor. Here during this interval the charge is higher than during this other interval in which the charge is uh, much lower. They are in the ratio as we have seen of the number of capacitors N. And then maybe we can check also the dynamics if we do the complete simulation from zero up to one millisecond. Then we can see also here the transient during the start up and then by measuring here we can get that the time constant is very similar to the value that we have calculated theoretically. Now let's study the uh, fractional gain switch capacitor converter but with a gain higher than 1. As we know we don't have to redraw all the converter because the converter the switch capacitor converters are uh, bidirectional so it is enough to put or connect the input voltage source on the uh, other side of the converter and then the load and the filter capacitor CO on the left side of the converter. So with this we will see that the output voltage is going to be n plus 1 divided by n times the input voltage so it's a fractional gain but now with a value higher than 1. So in this case we can consider our first interval, interval phi 2, in which what we are doing is to charge all the capacitors C in series. And then the, uh, the output side of the converter is disconnected from the input side of the converter, so the current is applied only by the output capacitor. And then during the other interval, now interval 5-1, what we are doing is connecting all the capacitors in parallel and then sending charge into the load during this interval. So again, let's analyze this in more detail in order to obtain the different characteristics. In this case, it is much easier to do the analysis because during interval phi 2, we are not injecting charge into the output capacitor. Situation is like this. So we only are transferring charge into the output capacitor during interval phi 1. So before the interval phi 1, we come from interval phi 2. So all the capacitors are charged with a voltage equal to Vi divided by N. So this is the situation here, but with all the capacitors placed in parallel. And then at a given instance, uh, instant, we close this equivalent switch and the situation would be like this one. All the capacitors in parallel and then with a voltage equal to the output voltage minus the input voltage. So before 5.1 the charge is this value here, C times Vi. And after 5.1 we have this value of the charge, the total charge is Nc times Vo minus Vi. So the difference of the charge is calculated as shown here and we know that the average current is the operating frequency times the charge. So we obtain finally this expression in which we have the fractional gain now higher than 1 minus the equivalent resistance times the average current.
and the equivalent resistance is given by 1 over n times 1 over Fc. So in this case also we have a um, equivalent resistance much lower than the factor 1 Fc, depending on the value of uh, the number of capacitor, of course, but if this number is high, then we are going to have a low value of the equivalent resistance, and therefore uh, better dynamics and better efficiency. The output of voltage ripple can be calculated in a similar way. In this case, we are injecting charge, as we know, only once during interval phi 1 into capacitor CO. So this is the charge that we are injecting. If we use this expression, as we have seen, then we can obtain that the charge is equal to uh, the average current divided by the frequency, or the average current times the uh, switching period. At the end, as we know, in this case, we are injecting charge during a very short interval of time. So the rest of the time we are discharging the capacitor CO. And therefore, this is the reason that the charge uh, at the end is this value here. So from this, we can calculate the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. And finally, we get this expression here that is similar to the one that we have obtained in other converters equal to the average current divided by the operating frequency times the output capacitor CO. As a summary and as usual, this is the average model with the equivalent circuit and the output voltage versus output current characteristic. How to calculate the output voltage using this expression, the output voltage ripple, the efficiency and the dynamics. Let's see very quickly another example. In this case also with a number of capacitor n equal to 3. So uh, we can call this a uh, 4 thirder because we are going to obtain at the output uh, 4 thirds of the input voltage. We are going to use an input voltage of 10 volts again. So the output voltage will be 13.33 volts approximately. This is the ideal value the same values of the capacitances and also the switching frequency. So the equivalent resistance in this case is 0.33 ohms and for the same load of 13.33 ohms, so trying to get around 1 ampere from the output, the output voltage will be 13 0.0 volts, the efficiency is 0.98, same as before, the output current 0.98 amperes, and the output voltage ripple is 109 millivolts. Finally, the time constant of our circuit in this case is around 29.7 microseconds. So here is the circuit to simulate our converter. Is the same as before, but in this case we are uh, placing here the input voltage source on this size of the converter of 10 volts and the load and output capacitor on this other side. So the other elements are exactly the same. So we can run the simulation and see the output voltage. Then we can see that it is as expected. The output voltage is. Uh, approximately 13 volts. The bit-to-peak -peak, uh, output voltage is also very similar to the value that we have calculated. We can maybe see, adding another pane, see the current injected into the output capacitor. So we can see that now there is only one um, charge injected in one interval of the operation of the converter. And again, if we do the complete simulation, saving data from the beginning, running again the simulation, we will see that the time constant is uh, approximately the value that we have calculated theoretically. Something like this. And we will obtain approximately the expected value. 
This is a summary and comparison of the converter in both operating modes with gain lower than 1. We have all this information as we have seen before and with the gain is higher than 1. Then we have this equivalent circuit and these other equations. The behavior is very similar mainly the biggest difference is that we have a slightly lower equivalent resistance in the when the gain is lower than 1 than when the gain is higher than 1, especially for the lower values of the parameter n. If the parameter n is high, then the equivalent resistance here tends to the same value as shown here. Of course, uh, also the gains are different. Here is n over n plus 1. Here is n plus 1 over n. And also here we have two different peak-to-peak -peak, uh, output voltage reports, as we have seen, because we are injecting charge in the two intervals. And here we are injecting charge only in one interval. Regarding the dynamics, again, it will be a little bit better here because the value of the equivalent resistance is lower than in this case, especially when the number of capacitors n is low. Finally, if we are not interested in the fully bidirectional operation of the converter, then we can substitute some of the switches by diodes and then make the converter simpler. So in the case of the fractional gain with gain lower than 1, then we can substitute these um, switches here by diodes, as shown here, and then we have a simpler circuit. And in the case of the fractional gain converter with gain higher than 1, then we can substitute the switches on this side here by diodes as shown in this figure. So we can have a lower number of controlled switches. Well, this concludes our presentation today. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.